We're going to jump jump into uh, Romans chapter one. Um, Romans focuses on the gospel of grace and gospel and grace can be used interchangeably and the grace of God is God's unmerited undeserved unearned favor Paul in the book of Romans is writing to a Gentile church uh, these Gentiles have gotten saved and then the Jews came in and jumped in and uh, tried to uh, convince these Gentiles that they uh. needed to keep the law. So Jews came in to try to teach a mixture of law and grace that caused confusion, so Paul is addressing that. And the gospel and grace can be used interchangeably. When you're preaching the gospel, you're preaching the uh, the grace of God. When you're preaching the grace of God, you're preaching the gospel. Paul says, I'm not ashamed, in verse 16, of the gospel of Christ. Um, if you look at Galatians 1, 6, and 7, it talks about, in one verse, the, the grace of Christ, and in the other verse, the gospel of Christ. So, we'll go over there quickly. Um, Paul says, I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him who called you in the grace of Christ to a different gospel. There are many people preaching a different gospel today. They're preaching a gospel of, of works and trying to combine works and faith, even though many people preach that you're saved by grace through faith, you don't have to work for it. Once a person gets saved, they begin to teach a mixture of grace and law that in order to, to uh, get blessed, in order to get your prayers answered, you need to... Uh, keep the Ten Commandments or you need to perform, you need to make sure you're, you're reading your Bible, you're praying, you're doing what God tells you to do. If you don't do that, uh, God's not going to bless you. And so it gets into a performance-based way of living the Christian life, which God does not intend, intend for us to live like that. We're to live totally by grace because it's either by law or by grace. If it's by law, then grace, you know, then grace is no longer grace. Okay. So if it's, it's in Romans 11, 16 tells us that it's either by law, okay. Uh, if it's by grace, then work is no longer work. If it's by works, then uh, grace is no longer grace. So it's either one or the other. You cannot mix the two. So Paul says here, um, I marvel that you are turning so soon from him who called you in the grace of Christ to a different gospel. Verse 7 says, which is not another, but there are some who trouble you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. That was what was happening, happening in Romans as well as here in, in Galatians. That People came in to trouble these uh, Romans, the Roman church, with a different gospel, mixing works or mixing faith and works, which you cannot do. So, verse 6, Paul uses the term grace of Christ. Verse 7, he uses the term gospel of Christ. Well, which is it? Two ways of saying the same thing. He's saying the exact same thing. The gospel of Christ is the grace of Christ. It is the uh, unearned, unmerited favor of God. So, 
as a Christian, we live our Christian life the same way we got saved. We got saved by grace through faith. It wasn't works. We got saved. We didn't work or earn for our salvation. So as we received Christ, the same way we received Christ, by grace, that's how we we want to walk. That's how God wants us to walk. As we, Colossians 2, 6, as we have received Christ Jesus our Lord, so walk in him. We're, that's how we ought to walk, by grace, through faith. Now, the grace of God has to be received by faith. If it was just grace that saved everybody, everybody would be saved without them uh, having to receive it. But we receive God's unmerited favor by grace, Two things that get us saved. God's grace provides salvation. Faith receives our salvation. You see that? So by grace, you've been saved through faith. Now that's how we ought to walk, by faith. We walk by faith, not by sight. The just, we saw that in Romans earlier. Romans 1.7 uh, says, the, excuse me, Romans one. 17 says the just shall live by faith. Okay. We, we could say we're to live by grace through faith. That's how we receive Christ. That's how we ought to walk. Paul says I'm not ashamed of this gospel. This the gospel is over over the top good news. This gospel of grace is that through the finished work of Jesus on the cross our sins have been taken care of. There's nothing we did to deserve it. We got what we didn't deserve because of what Jesus did on the cross. We didn't we didn't earn it. We just we just receive our salvation. And not just salvation from sin, we went into uh, salvation being a total all inclusive word. It means deliverance, preservation, healing, safety, soundness, prosperity. Victory in every area of your life. That's what the gospel produces. Paul says, I'm not ashamed of this gospel. It is the power of God to salvation. It's the power of God to healing. It's the power of God to deliverance. It's the power of God to prosperity. We looked at James 5:16, 5, uh, 5, 14, 15, somewhere along there where... Um, where it says, is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, uh, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick and, and save salvation. It's, it's all, all the same thing. Salvation, save, has had to do there with healing. So salvation is more than just forgiveness of sins or, or, or the, having to do with the new birth. It has to do with everything that accompanies the forgiveness of sins. There's things that accompany salvation. Hebrews 6, 9 talks about things like prosperity for, for all your needs to be, be met financially, to have more than enough financially, to be delivered from any addiction, or and to, to have joy, to have, have peace. It's just, just total package that we have in the gospel because of the finished work of Jesus on the cross and there's we, we don't have to pray hard to get it we don't we don't have to earn it by making sure that we do certain things and do good works now we do good works but not to earn salvation we do it because we love God and we love him because he first loved us. See, it's not about our love for um, our love for God. It's about his love for us. Once we receive his love for us, then we're able to uh, love God and, and to love others. Once we receive God's love, God, the gospel of grace, when, when we understand that, we, un we understand that our sins are, are forgiven, that that. God is not mad at us. He's not angry with us. He's madly in love with us. Sin has been dealt with on the cross. We don't have a sin problem. We have a receiving problem. And so we have 
a wonderful salvation. We, we have a great salvation that has been given to us. And um, we're going to talk about the wrath of God. Now, we left off here in verse 18. And um, it says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men. Now, the wrath of God has already been revealed. It, it's revealed right now. And um, you don't have to, uh, like some people think, go out and preach and tell people how bad they are. That See, that's not our message. Our message is good news. Uh, well, no, you just got to go out and tell people that they're a sinner, that 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 they need God in their life, and that 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 uh, they're not living right, and that they're going to hell. Now, I want you to just hang on to your seat here and listen to this very carefully. Our message is not wrath. <laughs> this verse, this passage is is going to let us know. That people already know they're sinners. At a heart level, people are already convicted. They already have wrath. They already the, the wrath of God is revealed. Actually, in the Greek, it says the wrath of God. The, the tense is past tense. The, the wrath of God is already revealed. You don't have to tell people that they're a sinner, they already know that. And uh, every person has an intuitive knowledge that they're a sinner, that they've done wrong, that they're transgressors and deserve rejection and not acceptance. They're, at a heart level, people already know that. And we're going to get into a different types of sins that people get into, uh, including homosexuality and so forth. The reason why people fight so hard, I'm getting ahead of myself, but the reason why people fight so hard to try to get people to accept a homosexual lifestyle or any other kind of ungodly lifestyle, for that matter, um, is because they already know it's wrong at a heart level. At a heart level, everybody has a knowledge of God. Everybody has a knowledge that they've sinned and come short of the glory of God. It's like God put a, a homing signal in us. You know, a homing pigeon, you can take a homing pigeon and... Uh, put him in the trunk of your car, I mean, put him in a bird cage and put a blanket around it, put it in the trunk of your car, drive a thousand miles in any direction, open your trunk, take that blanket off, open up the cage, and that homing pigeon <laughs> will be drawn right back to its, its uh, nest or wherever it came from. Because it's just got a, a built-in GPS. <laughs> Everybody at a heart level uh, is being drawn to God. Let's look at this. For the wrath of God is revealed, verse 18 in Romans 1. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and, and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. You see that? They... People have a have a heart knowledge. Everybody knows there's a God. Everybody knows they're a sinner. But what they do, they suppress it. Because what may be known of God is manifest in them. You know why? Because the wrath of God is already revealed. See? And um, at, at, a, at a heart level, they know there's a God. And what 
may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so they are without excuse. Everybody at a heart level knows there's a God. They know they're a sinner. They know that they're worthy of rejection and not accept acceptance. Now there's one exception to that. And um, now some people say, "Well, I don't, I don't, I don't know there's a God." Either they're lying. See, some people say that, and uh, they're they're lying about it, or God has given them over to a reprobate mind, and that that's. Uh, you know, a person has to go, has to really suppress that for a long time before that can happen. But most people aren't in that situation. But there, it is possible. That's an exception when, when, a, when a person just doesn't have any knowledge of God. They can deaden themselves to this intuitive knowledge um, and, and walk away from it and, and have a hard heart. They can develop a hard heart, and then God turns them over to a reprobate mind. We're going to look at that a little bit later. But this is very important, and, and um, so you don't have to go around telling people they're they're sinners. They already know. That's not the good news. The good news is there is a solution to the sin problem, and that's what people need to know. Jesus is the solution. So we go and preach Jesus and what he's done for us on the cross, that you don't have to be a sinner anymore, that God has a wonderful plan for your life. People get beat up enough during the week, um, Monday through Saturday, they don't want to come uh, to church and get beat up some more. They don't want to hear a preacher telling them how bad they are. Okay, even though it would be true if I said, hey, you all are sinners. Okay, that's not compromising the gospel because you don't tell them what they already know. They already know. They already feel bad. See, if we can get a hold of this, we can understand that people already at a heart level, they're convicted already. Um, they're condemned. People are condemned. They're walking around in condemnation. They're walking around guilty because every person walking the face of this earth, unless again God turned them over to a reprobate mind, they suppressed it so long in their heart, they 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 deadened themselves, and and they they walked away from this intuitive knowledge to the point where they. Uh, I've just rejected God and suppressed it for so long that God turned them over to a reprobate mind be because they, they've just, their heart got hard. Other than that, people are walking around with conviction. What's, what's, what may be known of God is, is manifest in them. For God has shown it to them. God has shown every person that that there is a God, that he exists. And again, if, if people say that, oh no, I don't have I don't have I don't know that, then they're lying. They deep down they know that. And some folks, when you if you would put a gun to their head and say, I'm on I'm gonna kill you, some of those people will cry out to God. I heard I heard somebody that was um they said the plane was going to go down or, or they were they, the plane wasn't going down excuse me it was um it looked like the plane might be going down they had some turbulence and the plane kind of looked like it was in trouble people were praying <laughs> people people were praying see some folk that they talk all this noise about well I, I don't I don't really think there's a god if you put a gun to their head, you might hear them crying out to God. 
see, because everybody knows that they're at a heart level that there is a God. Let's go on. So, for since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so they are so that they are without excuse. Because although although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an, an image made like corruptible man and birds and four-footed animals and creeping things. Let's back up to verse 21. Here are things that cause them to deaden themselves to the knowledge of God. Uh, this this is why God, this is how people get into a position where God turns them over to a, a reprobate mind. They, they didn't glorify Him as God. Uh, they weren't thankful. They became uh, futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were dark. Um, so they they deaden themselves to the knowledge of God. They profess themselves to be wise, professing themselves to be wise. They became fools. Some people think that when uh, we preach the gospel, those of us that share the good news and preach the good news. Some people think that it's foolish. And God says in Corinthians that God chose the um, foolish things of the world to profound the wise. See, the wise think that we are foolish, but it's actually the opposite. They're the ones that are fools. The, the Bible says that uh, I think it's Psalm 14.1. The fool says in his heart there is no God. That's a fool. But some of these people, they try to make us look like fools. All those people that believe all those stories in the, in the Bible, those stories aren't real. And pe people walking across the Red Sea and the, wall, the water standing up like, like, uh, like a wall and people going through the Red Sea on dry land. Uh, dry ground, Noah's Ark, all those are myths and those people that believe all that stuff, uh, they're just crazy. The rapture of the church, the, the church is going to get caught up and, and so forth. Some people, they think what we're talking about is foolish, but it's actually the truth. It's, it's the truth and it's the foolishness of preaching that God chooses to save people, but there's some people, like it says here, they call themselves wise. They think we're the stupid ones, but actually they're the crazy ones. And uh, but they try to flip it and think they're so intelligent and exalt human knowledge over Bible knowledge. Um, and so these are our conditions here that. Um, if a person deadens themselves and hardens their heart, God turns them over to this reprobate mind. And 1 Timothy 4.2, uh, let's look at that for a moment. It refers to a seared conscience. person, if they suppress this intuitive knowledge long enough, um, they can, their conscience will be seared. Speaking lies in hypocrisy, I'm reading from 1 Timothy 4 2. Speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron. 
so people can actually sear their conscience. That's another way of saying they're deaden deadening themselves to this intuitive knowledge of God that God places um, in people's heart. All right, whoever that is in that screen, I need you to hit that mute button. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see it. Okay. Yeah. That's Millie. Hey, Millie. Hey, Pastor. There's something, there's something in Indianapolis that Indianapolis folks don't see the mute button. Yeah. I had that, that happen with um, Dawn a couple of weeks ago. And she kept on, me and her was teaching the Bible class. Because <laughs> any noise you make, you're going to jump up on that screen. So I don't mind seeing you. <laughs> but uh, anyways, um, gosh, I wish I could see everybody's screen and I can, I can help. Because it might be, depending on the different device, devices you have, it might be in different places. But I'm going to go ahead and, and move on. We're, we're getting into some, some good stuff. Okay, um, if you can't find it, Millie, just be real, real quiet. Cause whenever, whenever you make some noise, you're gonna, you're gonna be on the main screen. Uh -huh. All right. Okay. Um, professing them, professing to be wise, they became fools. <laughs> so, boy, there's a lot of people like that. Uh, who they just think that they're so smart, they don't need God, they don't need the Bible, but deep down they know there's a God until they get to a place where they're reprobate. And um, that's what it's talking about here. Um, these people got reprobate, reprobate. They became fools thinking they're wise and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man. Now here they got into um, idolatry, idol worship. And they started wor uh, worshiping the creature and things of creation um, instead of worshiping the creator God. Change the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man and birds and four-footed animals and creeping things. Therefore, God gave them up to uncleanness in the lust of their hearts. If you reject God long enough, he can give you up. And he gave them up to uncleanness in the lust of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves who changed the truth of God for the lie. What they thought were, were wise was a lie, and they changed the truth into a lie. Well, they exchanged the truth for a lie and worshiped and served the, cre the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this reason... God gave them up. There, there it is again. Verse 24 says, God gave them up. Verse 26 says, for God, for this reason, God gave them up to, to vile passions for even their women, exchanged the natural use for what is against nature. This is talking about lesbianism. Women exchange uh, natural use um, for what is against nature. Likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman. God created man to be with man and woman to be with woman. Man with man, woman with woman is what God is calling in these verses unnatural. That opposite of natural is unnatural. It's against nature. It's it's against the uh, order of God. It's against the principles of God. And as I said before, one of the reasons why people fight homosexuality, um, 
fight for that so hard. The homosexual community, they really are fighting for acceptance. And I believe it's because at a hard level they know it's wrong. Natural use. The, the women exchange the natural use for an unnatural use. For what is against, it's against nature. Likewise, the men leaving the natural use of the woman burned in their lust for one another. It's not right, it's, it's lust. And uh, men with men committing what the Bible calls is shameful. But people think in their wise, society is trying to make people who believe the Bible and what the Bible says that about homosexuality that is wrong. And when we preach the truth about it, people who profess themselves to be wise try to make us look like the strange people. But actually, God loves the um, homosexual. But God is against homosexuality because homosexuality is against nature and ultimately homosexuality is against man. So those who practice those things are are going to be um, th they're going to receive the consequence of their lifestyle and of their action and God does not want them to face these negative consequences because he loves people and and I'm, I'm not going to um, stay on this because it's not any bigger than any other sin adultery, fornication, illicit sex, all of that is uh, is wrong. And even though a person does that, God still loves them. But sin has consequences. All right? Now, let's, let's go on. The men with men committing what is shameful and receiving in themselves the penalty of of their error, it's 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 not it's not God judging them. It's them receiving the fruit of the seed that they're sowing. If if you sow, you're going to reap. If you sow to the flesh, you're going to of the flesh reap. You're going to reap corruption. And that's not because God is judging you. Okay. God loves you. But there's consequences to sin. You reap what you sow. Receiving in themselves the penalty of the error which was due. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a, a debased mind, it says here, or a reprobate mind to do those things which are not fitting, being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness is more in here than homosexuality. And, and um, sexual immorality in, includes adultery, fornication, homosexuality, any illicit sex. Okay. Um, full of envy, covetous, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil-mindedness. They are whisperers. Um, backbiters. Haters of God. Violent. Proud bolsters. We see all the all this stuff today. Inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents. Wow, I'm seeing more of that than ever. Um, just 
kids being disrespectful to their parents, uh, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful, um, who knowing the righteous judgment of God, that those who practice such things are deserving of death, not only do the same, but also approve of those who practice them. Okay. Um, so, boy, there's, there is a lot there. Um, and this really describes the day and time that we're living in today. Um, people are into all kinds of things. And that's why Paul said, look, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It is the power of God. It will set people free from all of that stuff listed there uh, in Romans uh, 28 through the end of the chapter. Um, let's look at John chapter 6 and uh, verse... 44. Now, in the midst of all of this, remember what we talked about. Paul preaches the gospel. It's the good news that God loves us. God doesn't bless us based on our performance. It's by His grace. And the gospel is the power. It produces healing and deliverance prosperity produces peace because of the finished work of Jesus on the cross. That's our message, that God is not mad at us. He is not mad at humanity. He's madly in love with us. And he's drawing us to himself. In the midst of people doing all this wrongdoing and so forth, um, Right after Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, he goes into talking about how the wrath of God is revealed. And everybody has this intuitive knowledge of God, and, and in, but some people go off and, 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 they, and they follow these vile passions and then they're, um, they're not seeking after God. They're doing their own thing. And most of these people aren't reprobate. They're just out doing anything and everything, whatever feels good, do it. And you got people doing all kinds of stuff. Um, so it, it's just like a freewheeling society. And the church, what we have to do is go out and preach the good news. Don't try to condemn people. They are already condemned. They already know they're sinners at a heart level, according to Romans. I mean, if we really get a hold of this, now we know what to do because God is on our side. I mean, and, and, and God is not hiding from folks. <laughs> God's not hiding. I mean, and he's given us the mission to go into all the world and preach the gospel. Preach the gospel. We got to know what the gospel is. It's good news. We don't go out there standing up on a street corner on a box telling people how bad they are when they walk down the street. I mean, I now God helps us sometimes in spite of ourselves. Sometimes people can uh, uh, can get saved that way. But that's not what we ought to be going around doing is, is yelling at people and telling them how bad they are. They already know. They already know that they don't deserve <laughs> salvation. That they don't deserve acceptance. They deserve rejection. Nobody wants to hear anybody hollering at them, telling them how bad they are. When I was in college, there was a guy that always he would stand in the middle of the yard down, you know, where this intersection 
where a lot of people are passing through and walking, and he would just holler at folk. To this day, I don't remember what he said, but I know he had a Bible, and he's hollering at folks. I was even after I'm saved. I'm walking down the street of Indianapolis, and uh, this guy he doesn't know me. I'm I'm saved now, and this guy said, "Look at you, all latching days ago, walking down the street. Don't you know that the judgment day is coming, and all that kind of stuff." And like, dude, I'm just just enjoying my day over here, man. He don't know me, and I. I I didn't engage the guy. And uh, I commend these people because I know their heart is in, I mean, their, their heart is in the right place. They they want to help people. They, they don't want people to go to hell. That's that's why they're out there doing it. But that's not the gospel, though. <laughs> I mean, a gospel is good news. It's like, hey, y'all, Jesus took your sins for you. God didn't sweep sin under the rug. That's not grace. Jesus was judged on Calvary for our sins. He paid the price. Sin had to be dealt with because we in all inherited Adam's sin nature. And so, therefore, we needed a Savior. Jesus took care of it. So sin is not the issue. It's not how people are living is the issue. Okay? They're living that way because they have not accepted the solution, which is what we need to go out and preach. So when people come to church, I'm going to give them good news. And when we go out uh, and and all of us not it's not that people have to wait for Sunday we need to go out everybody's been commissioned you've been commissioned to preach the gospel to every creature that's 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 for every believer now here's why I brought this scripture up no man can come to me John 6:44 I'm, I'm going to close with this no man can come to me Jesus is saying how are you going to come to Jesus is if the Father draws him. Nobody's seeking God on their own. Based on this verse, Jesus said, no one, no one leaves out no one. <laughs> no one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. And he's drawing people. That homing signal is is in every person, and he's drawing them to himself. And when we preach the gospel to people, man, and, and give people some good news, I've seen it. I've been in uh, Joel Osteen's meetings, and people want to criticize Joel Osteen. They haven't been. They must not have been in some of these meetings when he gives an invitation. I've heard people say, well, Joel Osteen compromises and all that kind of stuff. What? At the end of his message, and yeah, he preaches a positive message. So did Jesus. Jesus went around and, and preached positive. Because he had good news. Good news is positive. And at the end of, uh, I've been in several meetings. I've been in a meeting with Joel in Sacramento. I've been uh, in, in Miami where the Miami Heat play, where the Sacramento Kings play. I went in Chicago. Let me see. Uh, where else? Um, in Miami. Yeah, I already said Miami. Twice in Miami. Where the Heat play and then also where the Marlins play in the Marlins Stadium. Washington, D.C. Outdoor Stadium. Um, Indianapolis, Conseco, now it's Bankers Life, but then with Conseco in 2010. Um, Toronto, Canada, <clears throat> and, and, and packed out. Almost all, if not all, sold out arenas. At the invitation, when Joel gave the invitation for people to receive Jesus, I've seen 
in almost every case, 50% at least, it's estimated to 50% of people stand up for the invitation, either, either to um, come to, the, to Jesus or, or as a, a person who walked away from God and wanted to uh, recommit, rededicate their life to the Lord. Okay. Uh, I see 50% at least of people come to the Lord. Because, because the good news is preached. We don't, need, we don't need to preach condemnation. That's not the gospel. People are all ready to condemn. They already know they're a the sinner. So when they come in and hear, hear good, good news, and that's, and that's why a lot of people don't come to church. One of the things, of the things about Jesus, Jesus was he was, was, he was a friend of sinners. The Bible said, the Bible said common, 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 common people heard, heard him gladly. Glad. And, and uh, Phil Muncy, Muncy who's chairman, the chairman of the Champions Network, that was one of the part of the show, 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 Pastor Pastor once once Pastor Pastor Irvine, Irvine California I believe he was sitting he was in the sitting in the sanctuary of late and he said and he said that's the that's the Lord, the Lord. why why did you love the Lord so much so much and he said he said because he's a friend of sin of sin because it's a phenomenal now they'll fill out with travels a lot lot and and uh, people who knew what he wouldn't think. We'll listen to the gospel about us and just who we believe. I mean, some people are out there. I mean, cussing, cussing and so, and so forth. forth. But yet, yet, they, they are trash right to Joel's message. Should they be just and all that? I'm not condoning that. Yeah, see, that's right. You, you know, you, you, got, you got to tell them. They need to stop all that cussing and you stop all that drinking and you stop living the way they live. See, how are they going to stop that? You're going to, you're going to get people to live a godly lifestyle more by preaching grace rather than pre preaching condemnation. Because there's no solution in condemnation. People already can be. They already know their sinners. Um, and actually, let me just close with this. That, see, the, the grace of God doesn't teach us to sin. Titus 2.14, 2.12, excuse me, 2.11 and 12. Um, for the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us, denying ungodliness and worldly lust. We should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present age. Grace teaches us to live right. Romans 6, 14 says, For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. When you understand grace, you want to live right. You want to live godly. Because you understand how much God loves you, how much He's done for you, and you want to serve Him out of love, not to get Him to accept you. He already accepts you. You're already accepted. Had a great time tonight. We're going to leave it right there. And uh, we got through the first chapter of Romans. We're not going to comment on every single verse in Romans, we're not even going to cover every chapter. But um, we will cover a lot, and we we have, have, have gone over quite a bit so far. Anybody have anything to say, you can unmute your mic, and uh, any questions you have, any comments you want to make. Um, it's been a joy to come to your computer tonight or your iPad or your iPhone or however you're watching 
Pastor, I was just, when you were in Romans 1, I mean, that is so plain and so clear. Uh, that, that uh, I was just, you know, the Bible describes it so plain and so clear, but it also, you know, when it's describing homosexuality, but then it goes from there, it goes right to the, to the, to the list of all kinds of sins, of, but it, you know, so it doesn't just pinpoint that one, right. but it is crystal clear in that Romans 1, isn't it? And, and you really, yeah. it, it was really clear tonight when you were bringing it out about just those different words, error, and, you know, they, it, it, it's just, and, 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 you know, I think, man, when you were preaching that, when you were sharing that, I was thinking 10 years ago, it wasn't even a thing about coming out of the closet, so to speak, and it's like once that happened on TV, the one lady that came out, DeGeneres, man, it's like, it's like a floodgate. It's like an off the charts now. Whereas before, uh, you didn't even hardly hear about it in public. Do you, do you know what I mean, Pastor? Yeah. I, I mean, it's it's amazing. I mean, to me, it's just like a reminder, man. We are in the last days. I mean, because we've seen this in the last less than ten years, a dramatic change. You know, particularly like in the internet over the internet, it, whereas almost if you, if you even insinuate anything about homosexuality, you're, you're blasted down, and this is like in secular media. I mean, it's just amazing, but this word is so crystal clear. It is. Yeah. Um, and it, it's... It's a fine line, and and it's it's we have to be merciful to people, and at the same time, we have to tell people the truth. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think instead of and and and, and I'm thinking about this is just if we, if we think about what what we just learned. It's better for us to just give people the gospel if, instead of coming at them. You're wrong. Ugh, that's just disgusting. You know, I mean, because we can be wrong trying to be right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I, I've had to, I mean, i got to practice. i got to practice the look on my face if I see two guys kissing, walking down the street. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I mean, because to tell them, hey, you know, you, you know what, y'all just need to stop that. That is, that is, that is disgusting and it is wrong. See, that's not right for me to approach them that way because that's not the guy that's an example of what we don't do and some people have some Christians have issue with that they think that hey, we need to confront it we need to confront wickedness and, and see at a heart level if you think if you believe that's right then why are you fighting so hard to push your agenda why are you fighting so hard to get other people to accept you because they they know on a heart level it's wrong I really believe yeah. it. I believe I believe that that it's been revealed to them based based on what Romans says. I don't care what's coming out of their mouth and talking about. Well, I, that Bible is just you know it, it's an old book and it's old fashioned and, and you Christians you really need to get with the time. Why why are you mad? Mm -hmm. Why are you trying to convince me? And what, what we need to do, I believe homosexuality is sin. But there's no bigger sin in, in, than anything else. And not, neither homosexuality or somebody shacking up. We have people who attend our church who live together. 
I'm not going to get up there. Hey, look, you shouldn't be you shouldn't be out there living living together. And I'm going to preach the Bible, but I'm going to preach God's love and God's acceptance and God's mercy that God loves them. Not because of who they are, not because of what they do, but in spite of who you are and in spite of what you do, He loves you Amen. with no asterisk by it. And when we preach the truth, people are going to want to live right. When they realize that God loves them and they understand, I don't have to live this way. God has a higher way of living for me. But if we start running them off, you know, we run them off before they can start learning. Yeah. And first of all, people are going to do all kind of stuff until they get born again until until their heart is changed you can't teach um, an unbeliever how to live by the Bible man these guys up were talking to me I don't know what they were talking about they can I grew up in church and but I got away from God. I mean, I don't even know if I was saved growing up. I got baptized, but when people would come to my, um, they came over my house. I was living with some guys. We were rooming together in college, and I remember these guys would come over and preach to me. And I didn't have an argument with them. I already, I knew I was, I was living wrong. I mean, me too. When they came and preached, I didn't have an argument with them. I just wasn't ready to change, so I didn't change. Amen. That's... I mean, but they didn't have they didn't really have to and you know, these guys were kind. They weren't they were trying to convince me and say of stuff something I don't, I don't really know what they were talking about. I, mean, I know they you know, they were Christians and they were trying to help me. I already knew I was wrong. I already knew the way I was living was wrong. Yeah. I know I was living beneath God's standard, but I wasn't ready to give it up. Yeah. Me too, Pastor. That, that was my experience also. I knew I was wrong. But I don't remember anybody telling me about God's grace, his unmerited favor, to his his acceptance of me. Man, I'm I'm thinking, man, I'm... I know I can't hide from God, but I'm really I don't really want to go there. I don't really want to talk about God because I'm convicted. Right. No matter what I was doing, no matter how much fun I thought I was having, I was convicted in my heart. Yeah. I remember calling out to God when I was <laughs> I was so high in Colorado. Um, I thought I was going to die. I, I mean, I was so drugged up, and I said, God, if you get me out of this. <laughs> God was so merciful to me. I went right back on living the way I w was before, but I said, God, if you just get me out of this, I'll serve you for the rest of my life. <laughs> I did this exact same. I can relate, Pastor. <laughs> and obviously, obviously I'm still, I, 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 I stayed alive. So, but I didn't. I didn't change right after that. I just yeah. went on suppressing that truth. Yeah. Thank God He's merciful to me, and He's merciful to people. Even, even people that use His name in vain and and doing all kind of things. He loves them so much. Glory to God. And He's drawing them. You know, people say you know they, they found God. God wasn't lost. I know what people mean by that, but you know, <laughs> here, you, you know, you you don't have to search too hard. He's 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 not hiding. He's drawing constantly, man. Drawing people to himself. People got that homing signal, <clears throat> and when we preach the the gospel, something about that man, like wow. It's over the this we're right back to this <clears throat> preaching grace over the top good news. 
You can be free, y'all. You can be free. Amen. God, he's, he's got a higher life for you. Amen. Just come on, man. You, you know, you, you two females and holding hands and, and, and living together and having a lesbian. Come to the altar. Come or come, you know, make Jesus the Lord of your life. <clears throat> he loves you. Not, all right, y'all, stop doing that. Then he will love you. <laughs> right. Right. See, that, that, I mean, that's when it really gets down to, okay, what do we believe? What are we preaching? You go over there and, and start preaching condemnation, they don't, nobody wants to hear, they, on a heart level, I believe they know it's wrong already, and you're just going to make them mad. Right. Right. They might fight and try to defend it, but deep down, right. they know they're wrong, but we've not offered them any solution. They're condemned. we preaching condemnation. It's just condemnation all over the place. Yeah. Guilt. You know, the harder we condemn, the guiltier they feel. Yeah, and the less they like us. Yeah, yeah. And so that's how the media portrays us, and we're against it. Right. Against it, we're we're not for things. Yeah, it's all the stuff we're against. We blowing up the abortion clinics and and and, uh, and people they're shaking the Bible and shake have Bible in one hand and shaking their fist at people. You know, you can turn the volume down on some preachers on television. Man, it looks like they're mad and angry. I learned to smile more. I learned to, I mean, yeah. But people try to make it seem like when you when you preach positive and you pre it's like oh man that's come on man it's like you preach good news and people get mad at you but it's religious people they did the same thing to Jesus Amen. the only people Jesus were hard on were religious folks I mean if you think about it. I mean, you know, don't he know? You know, they were criticized. Don't he know that woman he's talking to is a sinner? She's just like, duh. It's it's not the well that need the physician with those that are sick. Mm -hmm. He's coming to offer offer love and mercy and acceptance. Drug that woman out. The law said, she ought to be stoned. What do you say? He who was without sin cast the first stone. They all walked out, you know, the story. Then Jesus said, nobody condemns you. Neither do I. No, we need to address what they did. They got caught red-handed. That's an Adulterous, right? Jesus didn't even discuss the adultery. She already knew she was wrong. Jesus, all Jesus didn't ask her. Do you know that's wrong? Now you need to know. You need to stop sinning, don't you? Now he said. I don't condemn you. You go sin no more. He didn't have to ask her, <laughs> does she know that she needs to sin no more? She already knew. And then he said, I am the light of the world. Wow. Now people disconnect that, but that is in the same context Jesus said, when he said, I am the light of the world, most people disconnect that with that story. But Jesus is saying, I, see, he is the light that's revealing his forgiveness. He shed light 
the, the, the light was on his goodness and his mercy and his love and his grace. The light exposed his unmerited favor to that woman. And when most people, most believers, Christians talk about light exposing, it's talking about exposing the hidden things of darkness and so forth. And it will expose people's sin. It does do that. Uh, light will expose. But uh, here he's talking about light exposing his mercy and grace and love and kindness, his acceptance. He says, I am the light of the world. And, and we uh, are to be extensions of Jesus and be, we've been given the ministry of reconciliation and we are, um, we are to go and we are the light of the world. We are with Jesus on the inside of us in the person of the Holy Spirit. We are going out and spreading the light sharing the light, the light of God's grace that you can receive his mercy, his love and his acceptance. Well, we started something else. I want to thank everybody for tuning in. And uh, it's been a good time. We're enjoying Book of Romans, if you are enjoying this, if you're getting some out of this, uh, give us a comment. Let us know. Let us know what you're getting out of this. I'd appreciate that. Um, subscribe to us. If you're watching on YouTube, hit the subscribe button. That'll be a blessing to me. And comments are always good on, on YouTube. Helps us get subscriptions, comments, helps us to uh, move up higher when people are searching and uh, so alright everyone well that's all for this evening if nobody has anything else um, we love you and uh I'm expecting good things to come into your life. I speak blessings and favor Amen. and victory over you. I believe that uh, a shift is happening, that God is shifting things in your favor. That um, whatever you need from God, whatever you desire from him, just receive from him. Receive um, from his supply that is unlimited. Receive from the unlimited supply of Jesus. I speak victory over you. You are an overcomer. You are a champion. And I declare that you win in life, that you overcome every problem, everything, every situation, every challenge that you face. You will come out victorious because you are a success right now already because Jesus lives in you. Have a great night, a great week, and we'll see you soon.